Hi, Timothy Unger here. In this video, I'm going to cover shell commands in Emacs. To run a shell command in Emacs, you're going to type the meta key followed by the exclamation point, or in most keyboards, the alt key followed by the exclamation point. So to do that, I'm going to type alt shift one or alt exclamation point, and then I'm going to run a shell command of ls to list out the storage in the current directory. And you'll see that I have this mini buffer pop up here with the files here. Now, sometimes this is a little uh, tricky, but sometimes you can click on it. Sometimes it gives me this window buffer is not active. But when I was online, one of the things I was doing is I was creating uh, basically PDFs on my Emacs lessons. And what I was doing is I was SSHFSing into my remote server that holds my website or one of my websites. And um, I was going to a directory creating markdown files. And then I was doing alt shift and then running a pandoc command. So pandoc, and then let's say I had, these are the actual ones that I copied. Let's say I do editing one dot markdown dash O for output and then editing dash one, whoops spell this right, editing-1.pdf. And I would run that command and that would create a PDF on the remote server and then I could link it, okay? So the output of that is on this website here. This website I have, timunkert.com, uh, which if you're following these Emacs tutorials, you might be noticing, oh, I'm putting up some of these PDFs. So like for instance, on this lesson, that's how I created this PDF, was running a shell command, the pandoc shell command on a remote server. So you can go here and download the free PDF with all the lesson plans. Also, just want to note that with this website, if I go to the home here, you'll see that I'm listing out you know, some of the games I created, my YouTube playlist on Emacs, and then each individual uh, video I've been posting on YouTube. So if you want to find them easier, I've gone back through August. I have to go back further through uh, previous months, but I do have, you know, the, the most recent six months up there where you could go and take a look if you want. I'll leave a link to that website and a link to this PDF in the description below. Okay, let's get back to our markdown file. And um, so we can run a shell command that way. I'm going to just Control G to quit out of there. Um, and another thing we can do is what we can do is we can run a shell command on a region. So if I want to mark this region, uh, I'm going to do Alt H to mark the paragraph there. And I can run a shell command just on this region with Alt and then the pipe. So um, I'm going to do Alt Shift and the key below the backspace. So Alt in the pipe and the shell command on the region I want to run is sort. And then you'll see below in this mini buffer, it uh, sorts them out. Okay. And I could copy that if I wanted to and switch to it. Um, the other thing I can do is, and this makes it a little bit easier, is I can run the shell command and put the output in the current buffer. So let's uh, say I want to, um, I want to, uh, list the storage and put the output in the current buffer. Let's go do that. So I'm going to do control U and then alt exclamation point or alt shift one. And then I'm going to run the shell command LS and it's going to output the files that I have in this current directory right in my buffer. So that's, that's helpful. Uh, if you're running a bunch of shell commands and you want to put them into a buffer, okay? So I did this with this um, directory that I had on my remote server. You can do that as well. I put that in here just to show you the files on the remote server, okay? You can also, let me uh, split panes here. So I'm going to do control X3. And what I'm going to do is alt X and then type shell. And now I'm into a shell on the right hand side here. Okay. So now I can run shell commands right from here. Um, and to stop a shell command, I'm going to do control C, control C, but I can run a bunch of stuff. Like I could run my pandoc. Uh, let's say I had this one, 
and I called lesson, I don't know, one dot markdown dash O, and I could do lesson one dot PDF. And say I was on working on a remote server with SSHFS, it's a little bit slow, uh, this pan dot command. So it takes like a minute or so to do this. So while it's doing this, depending on the internet connection, of course, while it's doing this, I can switch over to this buffer here and be working on stuff while this is running over here. Okay. I'm not going to do that right now, but that's just a, a demonstration of something you could do. So you could do a task that's kind of taking a while while you're doing some work in another buffer. Okay. Um, if I do alt P or meta P, uh, that's going to tell me the last command I ran, which actually was exit. And then I can uh, cycle up through my previous commands and I can cycle back down with MN or sorry, alt N, meta N. So I can cycle up to the previous with meta P and cycle to the next one with meta N. Okay, um, we can also have output groups. So let's let's just, I don't know, list out the storage here and let's do, uh, see how much uh, disk we have. And now I can use control C and then control P to go to a previous one and then control C, control P to go to the next previous one. And I can do control C, control N to cycle to the next one, control C, control N to move down through my output groups. So uh, you'll see that control C, control P right here and control C, control N right here. That moves you through the output groups. Um, I can also rename shell ses sessions so I can create as many shell sessions as I want. That's hard to say. Uh, and I can also in my .emacs or init.el file, um, I can set the shell file name. Um, so for instance, if I wanted bash, uh, I would do bin slash bash. Now, typically it goes whatever your default shell is minus bash. So I think it, it runs that. Uh, but you could set ZH, ZSH or whatever you want. Uh, the other command, the final command I want to talk about in this video is uh, just if I do Alt X and then type send invisible, that will uh, basically hide passwords. I've noticed that the shell, like when I do SSHFS, it will ask me for my cPanel password after I type in my username and IP and it will hide it anyways. But that's an additional thing you can do uh, in Emacs. So that pretty much concludes it. Uh, please, yeah, check out the site here and check out, uh, you can also go from the home page, go to the downloadable PDFs. So I created a bunch, so editing one, they'll open in separate windows. You can just click download to download them. It shows all the commands here. And uh, so that's, and that was, these were all created using basically the, these shell commands. So it's, it's one useful thing that I did was just updating this website uh, with the shell commands here. Anyways, I want to thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like and uh, that'll help it get out to more people. And I hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day.